So really what we've done is try to focus on gaining evidence in um, women undergoing breast reconstruction. Firstly, mostly in the immediate context um, and particularly really trying to establish evidence where very little exists in the field of probably the majority practice in the UK, which is using the latissimus muscle or the so-called back flap, uh, pedicled skin and muscle and fat from the back, either on its own to reconstruct the breast after mastectomy or together with an implant assist so that obviously technically some women would be better served by one procedure versus another it's always been judged by surgeons. But having reviewed the literature, what we find over really critiquing quality of life, where women in fact report their outcomes in different ways in the literature since 1978, what's evident is that there is very poor methodological practice in the studies around this field of women's quality of life and also the studies are somewhat flawed in that they don't extend over a long enough follow-up and also there's virtually no evidence or very little on this particular type of breast reconstructive technique and even less evidence when women may require radiation therapy after mastectomy which is becoming increasingly the paradigm, increasingly the trend um, and so on that basis, five years ago, we started prospectively giving women validated or tried and tested questionnaires in cancer and for breast symptoms, body image, anxiety and depression, and also a sort of a study-specific questionnaire because really on how they regard or are satisfied with their breast appearance. Because up until now, we've never had a specific breast reconstruction questionnaire that has been validated internationally and we have colleagues at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York that are kind of in parallel with us they're sort of already further along in phase three of a breast reconstruction module in the States and we are now going into phase three of a European validated breast reconstruction module and so we've now taken the opportunity having looked at our data over five years coming up with very interesting results to really test the case whereby surgeons drive women down particular routes or types of breast reconstruction or where surgeons perhaps don't offer women breast reconstruction because they think radiotherapy will always thwart a particular technique. We're challenging that and now on the basis of the lack of data and showing that effectively we can't prove which type of surgery is best or what to do when women need radiotherapy, we are setting up what is called the QUEST trial, which is looking at quality of life in women after mastectomy in breast reconstruction. And so obviously that is actually profiled as a poster at the meeting here at European Breast Cancer Conference and has been presented in, in, uh, in other European settings. And so we are due to launch the QUEST trial in May. It obviously has to go in for ethical approval. We've had tremendous consumer input from women that have had mastectomies, who have had breast reconstruction, because obviously this is the first time internationally that we're attempting to randomly allocate women to what has always been a patient choice procedure, except that choice has never been based on firm evidence, either at a clinical level or for women to actually access. So, you know, it is a challenge. It's only ever been done before twice at a single institution in Edinburgh many years ago in the early 1980s and at the Karolinska in the late 90s. And so because those were single institution, relatively small numbered studies, they, they haven't really contributed to a body of evidence. They've showed that randomization is feasible, but of course we've moved so much further along the line. So we've obviously, our big systematic review has just been accepted for publication and will shortly come out in Annals of Surgery um, this year. And of course that really sets the basis and we hope by sort of, I suppose, creeping substitution that the, the expert community that is both plastic reconstructive surgeons and breast cancer reconstructive surgeons will slowly imbibe the fact that we've been practicing in an evidence-free zone, or relatively so. 
I mean, obviously, the question of the trial, it's, it's a feasibility study because what CRUK have done is fund us to test the feasibility of both surgeons and patients accepting the concept of random allocation. And so what we have spent the last 18 months doing is setting out that information in a very clear way and you can imagine what we've also done is we've constructed a patient information DVD because the Quest trial, without getting too complicated, actually has two trials. One where women are not expected to receive radiotherapy and that's a separate trial. And then another trial where women are expected to receive or to require radiotherapy because they've got perhaps bigger tumours or they're younger, they've perhaps got uh, tumor cells in vessels, something we call lymphovascular invasion, or, you know, they just have a poor biological profile. And so in those women, that trial B is quite separate because obviously the types of reconstructive choices are different uh, because fundamentally you don't want to irradiate an implant uh, in a cancer patient because you get a bad cosmetic result. So effectively we've made a DVD that kind of subserves information for women respective to whether they're in A or B. And of course, ultimately, it'll be up to women to decide whether they want to enter this. We already have 19 surgeons across the UK cancer networks who have registered their interest. And that's pretty amazing in, in, in an arena where people initially said, you can't do this, or how can you possibly be considering this? So I think it is something that will probably gain momentum over time. Well, major, because fundamentally, up until now, if we think about it, surgeons across the country and women are in a position where they take the information as it exists out there, whether they access it on breast cancer care website, etc. How many surgeons actually are able to relay their personal complication rates? How many surgeons are able to uh, be able to relay data that women have fed back on because no one's ever actually asked women? Because clinicians have always said, we get very good cosmetic results or here are our photographs. So it's always been a clinician assessment of what we should do rather than turning it on its heel and actually making women at the center of a scientific experiment where they report on validated questionnaires. So it's very much what the government want. They want outcome measures, except we're using a patient reported outcome measure. Up until now, it hasn't been specific for breast reconstruction, but we're still showing some very interesting data uh, on an analysis of on our first 177 women, which is in our prospect of repeated sort of measures cohort which actually tells us that between three months and 12 months after mastectomy, it's not the type of surgery you do that makes you feel better or worse. If we look at the two types, whether we put an implant in or whether we use tissue only to make a breast, in other words, we've got a much bigger dissection on the back when you make a breast from only the woman's tissue, that that aspect doesn't appear to change a woman's quality of life at 12 months from three months. In other words, it improves over that time because they get over their surgery, over their chemo. But the major adverse effect is the impact of chemotherapy, which makes women feel worse even a year after that event. And that's not ever been really mooted or addressed in the plastic reconstructive literature or even the, the literature on the subject. Interestingly, where we thought radiotherapy would make women feel worse, at this point, from this preliminary analysis, it doesn't seem to impact. So I think that we're, we're preparing at the moment to look at the data in women, of, I suppose we, I can't say this off the top of my head, but I'm hoping there's enough mature 12-month data on well over 200 women, and that is the largest cohort in the world. So that's going to be the beginning, then we'll take it forward to 24 months and five years, and we'll run Quest alongside this, because not every woman is technically suitable to enter the Quest trial or may not want to. So we will still capture those women. And of course, they have the opportunity to feed back, whereas up until now, they don't. No one's actually asking them or analyzing it.